Hey everyone, welcome back to Fantastic Microbes and Where to Find Them. Today I'm going to be showing you this amazing beautiful creature known as the Gastrotrich and a couple of other microorganisms, but first I gotta show you how I got this. So we're at Bear Lake, Utah here, and there's a little marina that doesn't really connect to the lake, and so it is kind of stagnant and it allows for a lot of uh, microbial diversity. So I collected some of this algae here and put it in this uh, just water bottle, and uh, yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at it. So the very first thing that we're going to be taking a look at here is this uh, blue-green algae uh, cyanobacteria. This particular species is known as oscillatoria. Uh, it gets that name because it uh, oscillates uh, back and forth uh, depending on where the light source is. And so this is a pretty cool thing that uh, a lot of bacteria can do. And uh, it is basically how they get their nutrients. You know, these guys are uh, photosynthetic organisms. And so they go travel uh, wherever they can find the light and they do photosynthesis. And yeah, that's oscillatoria. Now on these guys, I found these single-celled organisms called stenters. Now stenters are really cool because they are really large. Uh, they are some of the larger microbes uh, that are single-celled that you can find. And in fact, the gastro trick that I showed you at the beginning of this video is actually smaller than all of these stenters. So, uh, which is kind of crazy to think about. So the gastro trick is a multicellular organism with uh, muscles and uh, 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 simple brain and stuff. But these stenters here, they are single-celled and they are just composed of muscle-like fibers and uh, organelles, not quite organs. Um, you know, they have a macronucleus and nucleus as the brain. Now, this particular stentor was a little bit sliced at its base, and I might have done this on accident uh, when putting it underneath the microscope slide. Uh, sometimes it happens, but one of the cool things about stentors is that they can survive small uh, cuts and things like that. Uh, they can, uh, you know, close themselves up and keep growing. And uh, here it is, it, it shrunk back. Uh, this is one of their defense mechanisms when they feel uh, threatened, they'll shrink back, and then eventually they grow out into their long trumpet shape. Now let's go ahead and change gears. For the rest of the video, I wanna talk about these gastro tricks. So we were at the same exact magnification that we were looking at that stentor zoomed in. So this is about 400 times magnified, plus or minus about two times uh, with my phone. Now, despite being so small, these creatures are actually a lot more closely related to us than the stentor or the cyanobacteria here. And the reason we know that is because they're multicellular. Now, they are not just more closely related to us than those guys, but they're also more closely related to us than, say, the sea star or jellyfish or sponges, all of those other animals. Uh, and we know that because these creatures are, uh, they have this thing called bilateral symmetry, which means that if you looked at them from like a bird's eye view top down, and you split them in half, they look the same on both sides. And so with, uh, you know, sea stars and jellyfish, those uh, creatures have what's called radial symmetry, uh, which means uh, you could split them, uh, you know, multiple ways, uh, like looking from the top. So these guys being bilaterally symmetrical, uh, they are really closely re related to flatworms, uh, which we've looked at before under the microscope, and sort of related to us because we are bilaterally symmetrical as well. Something that's cool to consider with gastrotrix is that they have a remarkable ability to survive harsh circumstances, or at least, you know, have their lineage survive beyond them for a long time. But at the same time, they have a really short lifespan. So these uh, gastrotrix typically only live for a couple of days to a couple of weeks, depending on the species. Um, however, you know, if they lay their eggs, their eggs can uh, stay and wait, you know, for the favorable circumstances for a very long time, years even. Uh, some gastrotrix can even uh, shrink down and uh, desiccate or dry themselves up into a cyst form that uh, can rehydrate and reanimate uh, once the conditions are right. 
I do want to point out that gastrotrichs are far from the only or microorganisms that can do this. Um, you know, tardigrades and rotifers, they can also form cysts and they can have their eggs last for a really long time. Brine shrimp eggs can last for years dried up. Uh, but one last thing that I do want to mention with gastrotrix is that they do have a great variety when it comes to reproduction. Um, most of these creatures are hermaphroditic, which means that they carry both eggs and sperm. Um, some of them lay eggs, you know, after they're fertilized. Some of them lay unfertilized eggs, which get fertilized later. Uh, and then some gastrotrix also give live birth. So uh, this great variety uh, probably helps with, you know, the survival of a lot of these different species. So that's going to basically do it for th this gastrotrick video. Oh, and stentor video and uh, cyanobacteria video. If you guys liked it, you know, give it a thumbs up. Let me know what else you want to see under the microscope. And I'll catch you around pretty soon. Thanks for watching.